So Jay Chow and I, we looked into a couple of texts by Nora Akami, Transversing Territories and the Case of the Traveler. Um, both texts are narrative, narratives regarding the current political and cultural sphere and its conflict within the Arab cities. Akami, referencing the works of three other authors, gazes upon these recent events of conflict and provides a polemic on the role the architectural education system or general education has had in contributing to the crises due to the implications of its authoritarianism within collegiate environment. She essentially argues these systems practiced in schools today are not only reflective but imperative to current political conditions, thus warranting an immediate period of transition in the culture of education. Um, throughout reading and analyzing the, four, analyzing the two texts, Throughout reading and analyzing the two texts, um, there are four points that we want to elaborate on. Uh, firstly, it's the role of architecture as a representational medium of society. Second, the, the potential argument against the text as a form of denial of culture. And thirdly, it's the exclusion as a form of violence. And fourth, it's the idea of identity throughout the text and the transition in approaching the term from a modernistic outlook to that of a postmodernistic outlook. Uh, so let us uh, talk about our first topic, the role of architecture as a represent, uh, representational medium of society. Um, we think architecture actually represents something. It might be local customs, local uh, environment, and national culture, and re region, a religion, and something else. Um, and uh, uh, according to our passage, Scott argued that we should rethink architecture's role uh, as facilitating stabilization and unification in national building, which based on the assumption that architecture is potentially a powerful social maker. Um, for example, in Russia and North Korea, there are too many, uh, there are too many Soviet buildings. It, it is uh, huge, big, and uh, monolithic. Um, we think it represents the power. It represents the power of the uh, authority or government. Um, so, uh, what should be architecture pursued based on the assumption that architecture serves as a medium and practice of social and practical shaper? In this text, Akawi is advocating for reduction in the in the type of nationalistic style and substitute with a multiplicity of style that is representative of our, car, uh, of our current diverse uh, society. This leads us on to our next point, which is that a denial of nationalistic style of architecture. Um, it can, from a different angle, be seen as a denial, denial of culture if we have one thing, was as people of different races and uh, of different races can share with one with one another, it is our distinctive cultures respective of our origins. However, if the discipline of a, of architecture progresses with a pattern in which we lose the traditional sense of uh, regional style or vernacular, could this in some ways be seen as a denial of culture? Um, for, the, uh, for example, um, in the in the develop in the development pro in the process of development of China of Chinese city, um, too many cities um, just pursued the same um, maybe organization of the uh, of the master plan of the city, or um, or there are too many uh, too many uh, same buildings, uh, same facade in the city. I think. Um, Maybe uh, they denial. Maybe uh, the city denial. Uh, maybe the city gave up some uh, local uh, culture and local styles uh, when they develop when they uh, build and uh, develop develop the city. And a good sample of this uh, of this topic is RCR architects, um, because uh, we think uh, the RCR architects. Um, it's, it's good at combine the local culture and um, and modern style of uh, architect of architecture. Um, for example, 
um, they use many uh, traditional or local materials like wool and stones uh, to represent their local culture. And meantime, uh, they use many iron, uh, they, they use many uh, uh, cast iron or steel uh, to help them to build a modern clean uh, space uh, for people. So they, strike, so they strike a balance between the uh, localism and globalization. And this is our second part. So Ji Chao, he's essentially saying that um, a reduction in a nationalistic style does not necessarily mean uh, denial of culture. By using the example of RCR, he, he shows how um, a cultural architecture or, or an architecture that's representative of culture does not necessarily have to take one architectural style or form. And he's showing how the way RCR does it, RCR um, takes upon regionalistic architecture um, that all have different kind of styles and forms and dependent on what kind of materials they use, how they're organized. Um, and he's showing how even cultural architecture can still uh, portray diversity in the, cult in the regional culture that they're within. Our third point that we want to talk about is um, exclusivity as a form of violence. Um, in the text, Akawi references exclusivity in collegiate environments as a form of violence, putting in direct comparison with the physical violence that is occurring in those regions. This puts into perspective the severity of the dangers and consequences that could occur as a result of exclusivity with regards to authoritarianism and the threat to freedom of speech and expression of ideas, in other words, democracy, and hence why she is advocating for academic freedom. So the academic freedom Makawi is introducing can be described accompanied by the difference in definitions between borders and boundaries. In a text called The Open City, Stephen Gold gives a description defining the differences between the terms borders and boundaries. He characterizes them as both edges. However, he describes boundaries as edges of separation that prevent ends from migrating over. In contrast, he calls borders as zones of difference, but where those differences meet and become interactive. Essentially, the academic freedom in question is the one of borders. Currently, it is set by boundaries, separating points of views, where one side is most often dominant over another. There is a kind of overarching narrative, and thus completely excluding other ideas from the sphere of education. Akawi introduces a system of education set by boundaries, where everyone acknowledges the pluralistic culture, diversity, and differences between one another. However, all within an environment that encourages those differences to constantly interact harmoniously and sometimes antithetically in order to essentially learn from one another, taking on the role of migrants within foreign settings. This leads us on to our final point being that of transition, with regards to the way in which we approach the idea of identities from modern into a culture of postmodernism. If we take Frederick Jameson's definition of modernism and postmodernism as an example, he describes both as being defined by the term differentiation. However, differentiation takes on contrasting meanings on the two different contexts. In modernism, differentiation was a relationship shared between figures, a figure-to-figure -figure relationship. Architecturally, all figures and objects had their own function, meaning, and purpose of existence that was different from the next. Thus, in modernism, differentiation was created between a figure-to-figure. In postmodernism, differentiation occurs even within single figures and objects. It is the idea of subjective relativity and that different people will have different ideas on one object or figure based on their subjective origins, values, knowledge, and experiences. Thus, the figure and its function can be appropriated and adapted into an infinite number of possibilities. With regards to the new culture of education that Akawi is advocating for, it is essentially one that adopts this culture of subjective relativity that exists within postmodernism ideologies, opening up both teaching and taught to acknowledge the possibility of diverse and multiple ideas on all, on all topics. It denies a bias and authoritative dominance within the collegiate environment, which is what currently leads into the cases of exclusion and diminishing voices of different opinions. So to summarize, 
In some ways, the text is only using the Arab cities to contextualize the author's thoughts with regards to the dangers of authoritarian collegiate environments, as those cities provide us with extreme conditions and examples of the subject in question. However, it would seem Akali is wanting to provide awareness as to these patterns of exclusion in education as a general form of pattern that may be occurring in many other parts of the world. Even in the U.S., if we take examples of public schools not allowing extreme right or left-wing speakers speak on their premises, we can witness examples of cases that represent exclusion and subjugation of ideas, which is essentially a form of a threat to the freedom of speech and democracy. The relevance of architecture in the text is essentially one of representation and challenges the general architectural profession to think more critically about how cultural and regional architecture can represent diversity and exist without being dominated by a single style or vernacular. 